What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. As usual, I have to instantly, most importantly, say thank you to everyone that has been liking, subscribing, commenting to my channel. You guys are freaking amazing. Thanks to everyone that has been joining my Telegram group. Uh, yeah, it's been really fun these past couple days. I, I come on at like, you know, midnight, right? And people are talking and it's been a really, really awesome, awesome experience. So thanks to everyone that's been joining the uh, Telegram group. I will leave a link in the description. That being said, let's move on to my topic of today's discussion, which is free crypto. Yay, free crypto. Everybody gets free crypto, right? But what am I talking about specifically? Well, I'm talking about forks and airdrops that are currently really big right now. Now, I have covered some of these before. I've covered the Ontology airdrop, I've covered the Bitcoin private airdrop, and I have covered the Callisto airdrop. But there are a lot of new people in the crypto space today. Every day we're getting new members, new people joining the community, so I wanted to take these and combine them into one definitive video for the time being right now so that we can for once and all just go over what is happening with these forks and how you can get involved should you choose to do so. If we look at the markets today, it is really nice to see the overall market cap again, again, because you know we keep doing this freaking up and down bouncing movement, but we are over $500 billion. I'm happy. Bitcoin currently right now is over $11,000. I don't know what it's going to be tomorrow because every time I make a freaking video, it's totally different the next day. But we are currently over $11,000 in Bitcoin. I am very pumped about this. I always suggest everybody hold just a little bit of Bitcoin. Actually, really, if you want to be honest, which coin pays out the most dividends over the longest period of time? It's Bitcoin, guys. I mean, how many forks did we have last year, right? We had Bitcoin Cash. We had Bitcoin uh, uh, Diamond, there was the Bitcoin Gold, there was Bitcore. Yeah, so there's a lot of Bitcoin. There's a lot of Bitcoin forks, guys. So if you want the most forks, then just hold Bitcoin. But today I wanted to talk about five cryptos that have either airdrops or forks coming up within the month, within the month and a half, all right? So number one would be Ontology. Now, I did a review on Ontology. You guys can go back, check my videos. I have a review. Really amazing project. If you don't understand what Ontology is, it is basically the bridge from the real world to the Neo ecosystem. All right? That's, in a nutshell, that's all it is. It's just a matter of creating a trust network and allowing outside businesses to connect to the Neo blockchain. That's really it. I mean, they will have their own dApps. They're going to have their own native token, their own blockchain. But in a nutshell, that is basically ontology. So if you are a Neo holder, this is the official statement from the Neo Council. All right. I'm going to read it to you right now. They say, to support a joint ecosystem, Ontology Project is handing over an amount of ONT, ONT tokens, all right, to be managed by the NEO Council, which they in turn decided to airdrop to NEO holders as a way of saying thank you. So we can see right here that the airdrop tokens are part of a donation and they will be a total that consists of 20 million Ontology. Now, let's not forget that there are 1 billion ontology tokens okay so are you going to get rich off of this airdrop well who can speculate on that type of a thing but the facts are the facts so for every one neo that you hold you're going to be paid 0.2 ontology which basically means you're going to need five neo for one ontology however i do want to say that there is a little bit of a i don't want to say it's a catch but you're actually, if you look right here, I'll highlight it for you, okay? It says delivery of the ONT tokens will be completed in the weeks following March 1st. Now, this is how it's going to work. You're going to get 0.1 ontology per NEO right now on the NEO blockchain as an NEP5 token. And the other 0.1 NEO is actually going to be held and won't be released until the Ontology main net, which is roughly coming around, uh, they're probably gonna come out around quarter two, that's what they're estimating on, but it depends on how the test net is operating, and obviously we'll have to wait for further details on that. 
Okay, so the thing I wanted to also note is that the Neo snapshot is happening around block 1974823, which is a rough estimate around March 1st, but it's not guaranteed. So definitely pay attention. There's many sites that offer this. You can go over to Neo Scan, Neo Tracker. They all offer the current block height so you know where we are, you know when to get in. But my question is if you're holding it, why sell just for ontology tokens when if we're talking about passive income, you're just going to get gas anyway. But that is what they're aiming for. So roughly around March 1st for every NEO, you're going to get 0.2 ontology. One will be distributed immediately to your Neon wallet or whatever wallet is supporting this. And the other 0.1 is going to be held until the main net release, which is estimated for quarter two. You guys got all that? All right, cool. The next coin I wanted to talk about is Monero. Now, <clears throat> Monero is one of the oldest privacy coins and arguably one of the most secure. And they have a different approach. They offer what is referred to as a ring signature. So if you look at it, it's almost like if you imagine a, sh uh, like a, let's take like a shotgun, right? And I just blast the shotgun and you have all these pieces that scatter everywhere. So then you you know they scatter everywhere and those are basically the transactions and then those scatter and then those scatter so it's really difficult to trace monero transactions because they're constantly being you know essentially scatter blasted however you want to word it you know it's all right that's a stupid analogy but essentially that's what it is but they are doing a fork and i came over to bitcointalk.org where there was a huge article they were well article they were covering Monero V it says that the hard fork split will occur <clears throat> at block 1529810 which is roughly the 14th of March now i have seen opposing thoughts on this some people say it could happen a little bit earlier some people could say it could happen a little bit later so it's extremely important that you pay attention to the block number and also Obviously, get involved in any of these communities because the best way to know what's going on is to get involved, get involved with the communities, go on the Reddits, join the Telegram groups. You know, that's obviously the quickest, fastest way to know what's going on. But if I come down here, if we could just cover it really quick, these are some of the features. It's going to be capped, okay? Um, it's secure, private, right, right. How is Monero different from, oh, how, here you go. How is Monero V different from Monero? So Monero V has a limited supply of coins in contrast to Monero's infinite coin supply, right? Because Monero can be mined. So we've seen a lot of people trying to mine Monero, taking your CPU, right? When you're visiting these websites. So that's the idea is that Monero V is going to be a finite amount. As we know, with things like Bitcoin, even Neo, you find these coins that they have a definitive amount that cannot be mined or cannot be, yeah, mined essentially over time. You find that they tend to create that demand supply in favor of the investors because obviously hodlers, right, people that are going to hold, and then that's going to create less supply, which is going to increase the demand. So that's the first feature. The second is that it's going to have the proof of work algorithm that are on, oh, excuse me. Monero V and Monero's proof of work algorithms are on different development path as Monero V will focus on mitigating the mass use of bottons and unsuspected browser based miners. So that's a key difference. Also, Monero V will have an active development fund that would be used for rapid development and feature integration versus Monero's voluntary donation based development process. And finally, Monero V will implement new protocols that will solve the scaling problems because scaling is going to be a huge problem in 2018. You know that and I know know that all right so they're going to address the scaling problem that faces monero and other cryptocurrencies for example bitcoin and if you want you can see they say an in-depth include uh in-depth details included in the monero v roadmap which you can come right over here bitcoin talk and that's where they pretty much discuss how that is going to work and the people that are worrying how i'm going to get it Basically, all you have to do is just hold Monero in a Monero wallet and you are going to be credited with Monero V. Obviously, wallets that you physically own your private key are the most suggested. I don't know about the different exchanges that are going to be supporting it. Obviously, I cannot advocate you hold your money on an exchange. However, do your research and if one or a few of them say they're going to support it, then it's on you. Okay. 
I wouldn't suggest that, but if you want to hold it on an exchange, you're more than welcome to. So <clears throat> moving on to the next one, which I've also covered on this channel, is the Z Classic Bitcoin Private Fork. So basically, if you hold one Z Classic, you're going to get one Bitcoin private. And if you own one Bitcoin, you're going to get one Bitcoin private. Well, let's see. One Bitcoin is currently valued at over $11,000 at the time of this video. And Z Classic is currently $196. So you are going to get the biggest bang for your buck if you hold Z Classic. Z Classic currently is not available on that many exchanges, but you can find it on Bittrex, which is a, a reputable exchange, and Cryptopia, which <clears throat> I would be careful with Cryptopia right now. There's been a lot of issues with withdrawals. People are not exactly happy with Cryptopia, so you can buy it on Bittrex. You can hold it in the official wallet. I don't know the statements on Bittrex currently as to whether or not they are going to be providing you with the forked coins. I would hope that they would do that at this point, considering that we've seen other... Other exchanges like Binance kind of take the forefront, so maybe this would provide a little bit more of the credibility back to Bittrex. Not to say that they're not credible, but you know what I mean. Like, you know, do something back for the community, put yourself back in the spotlight. It might be a good thing for Bittrex. So essentially, one Z Classic will give you one Bitcoin private. So if we come over here, um, I was over at Bitcoin.com, which, well, eh, I know, Bitcoin.com. Is it the real Bitcoin? We'll never know. But I did find this article interesting, and I highlighted a few things. It says, rather than simply tinkering with SegWit or adjusting block sizes, Bitcoin Private, BTCP, is adding ZK Snarks. The privacy-enhancing feature is best known for its use in the Z family of coins, including Z Classic, Z Coin, and Zencash. So, also, it's being... In is well, they said instigated, but it's being instigated by Rhett Creighton, who is simultaneously forking Bitcoin and Z Classic on February 28th. Now, of course, this is rough. All right, you definitely have to look at the block size. All right, so I haven't seen the information on that, but definitely keep an eye on it. And then that's when it'll be available to holders. So some of the other things I wanted to discuss that I highlighted down here is one of the reasons why the fork date was announced only recently was to allow time for Bitcoin private wallets to be thoroughly tested. So I have to say kudos to you guys. While it's too early to assert that the fork will go without incident, the signs look very prop promising. Now, Rhett Creighton has declared that Z Classic's development will continue to be supported, but there seems to be little purpose for its existence following the launch of BTCP. Bitcoin private. So what I gather from this is that they are not really going to be focusing on it too much. But as at the present, obviously, I said Bit Bitrix and Cryptopia are the only exchanges that are going to be covering the fork. But another article when I came over to Crypto Slate had a little bit of a different approach to this. And it says one of the leaders of Z Classic, Rhett Creighton, who I just spoke about, said that after the fork, he will focus his efforts on Bitcoin private, not Z Classic. If, hifter, if history repeats itself... Similar to the NXT airdrop situation, which you guys are more than welcome to look into that, the price of Z Classic will fail, oh, excuse me, will fall the second that snapshots happen. So in a nutshell, people are saying that this is a little bit of the buy the rumor, sell the news type thing. And if they're basically saying that with the introduction of Bitcoin private, what exactly does Z Classic have to offer? So it is possible that if we go back to these charts, we could potentially see a little bit of a dump, okay? I mean, this is insane. Guys, this is insane right here. I mean, look at, we are literally sitting at freaking almost all-time highs in Bitcoin and almost all-time highs in dollar valuation. So you're going to have to just do your thing on that one. You will get the... You will get the uh, the forked coins, but it's risky because what is that Z Classic going to be worth after that fork? So that was the other one I wanted to cover. The next one, which I already covered very, 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 very briefly in one of my videos, was the Ethereum Classic to Callisto. All right. So it says that technically it's not a true fork, it's technically an airdrop. So we're not really forking Ethereum Classic, but I can tell you that this recent run-up, I would suspect, has been due to a lot of the potential airdrop from Callisto. So Callisto with a ticker of CLO, it explains that a snapshot will occur at block 550000. 
Those who hold, and I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be ETC, not ETH, during the snapshot will get CLO, uh, CLO coins at a ratio of one to one. So one Ethereum Classic, one Callisto, all right? So moving on. It says that the background of this coin, it seems to be a continuation of a project known as Ethereum Commonwealth. Uh, you can look at the Git GitHub. The project is referred to as the Callisto Network Project. The purpose is to make a coin that is meant as a store of value and provides an incentive to hold the coin by implementing cold staking. So cold staking is a process during which you earn interest on coins by holding them for a specific length of time. If you stay till the end of the video, I actually have another coin that I didn't put on the list, but I wanted to talk about that in my opinion might potentially be another cold staking opportunity, but we will get to that. So how are you insured that you get the airdrop coins? They say, since this is an airdrop, it works a little differently than a fork. To get an airdrop, you must be in an Ethereum Classic wallet where you control your private keys. I highly, highly, highly suggest my Ether wallet. I like my Ether wallet. I know they had a the little bit of the debacle with my crypto wallet, my Ether wallet, whatever. I still use my Ether wallet. You can keep all of your coins on your Ledger Nano S, which I am not holding right now, but you can pretend it's there. And I think that's really good for safety and protection of your private keys. And it says, when is the airdrop? The documentation is applying that the airdrop will occur right after the snapshot date, but lot Logically, the devs need time to verify everything. So in other words, they're not entirely sure at this point, but you can feel free to comment. This person that left this uh, written by Thomas De Mitchell is that how you say it? So I just want to say thank you, buddy. Amazing write-up that you did here. You helped me with my research. Um, yeah, so that's basically the Callisto airdrop. And moving on to my final coin is EOS, Ethereum on steroids. Yeah, I don't know. That's just what people say. But Dan Larimer, he's the man. I stand behind anything that Dan does. So there's talks about the EOS airdrop of, uh, let me scroll up here, turn this on to highlight. There we go. And okay. So essentially there was a fork of Wikipedia, which I was not aware of, but there is this fork of Wikipedia known as Everipedia, which now technically Wikipedia is decentralized, but Everbright is even or Everbright, wow, I'm thinking of buying buying stuff right now. Everipedia is more decentralized. So it's better because you're not going to be able to just delete things and edit it and all this. Well, I mean, you will be able to edit it, but it's just, essentially, it's a more decentralized, decentralized version. Okay, let me just get off this. So there was this post that was out on Twitter. It came from EOS. This was over a month ago. And it said, special announcement, airdropping IQ tokens using the EOS distribution list. That was basically it. And there's been a lot of speculation as to what this means. When's it's happening? When can I get in? So I came over here. There was this awesome post on Steemit by uh, Vim Yukthi. I probably said that wrong, but thanks, buddy. I came down here and it says that uh, Everipedia does have a low bar for quality, so the sophistication does come at a cost. So they are making the IQ token, which is what's the token of Everipedia. It's IQ. That's the ticker, right? So IQ token, and once Everipedia is totally decentralized and hosted on the EOS or EOS platform, nobody will be able to block the site and people will be incentivized to keep the quality very high using the IQ token. Now, he does also mention in this article that there is a little bit of competition from Lunar because Lunar was trying to be, or is essentially, the Wikipedia of blockchain currently at the moment. If you come over here to Reddit, there was a nice post by Zombat, which I like the name, bro. Kind of reminds me of Zombie, so... I, I get it, all right? <clears throat> so he says, anyone holding EOS tokens in their Ethereum wallet, you will get the airdrop. And a lot of people are saying, well, why are you doing an airdrop when EOS is technically still an ERC-20 token that doesn't make any sense? I don't really know. Honestly, it's hard to find a lot of information on this, which is exactly why I am just taking a step back here, just giving you the information. I myself have not found an official definitive date, an official definitive block height, and it also is a little bit concerning. Not concerning. I just wonder why they're doing it 
now on the Ethereum blockchain. However, it's not an issue because we do know that EOS is an Ethereum based token, which will eventually be swapped out for the native token, which I assume that they're going to be doing the exact same thing with IQ token. So I wouldn't freak out and worry about that too much. I just would like a little more information. For me personally, I still think that it's a little convoluted and people are a little confused about what's going on. So is this happening? Is it not happening? I think it's happening. They made an official statement on the Twitter, but I, I wouldn't really, I would take a lot of information right now with a grain of salt, including what I'm saying right now. I mean, this is very, we don't really know a hundred percent, but I did decide to come over and look at the Everbright. Why do I keep saying that? You know why I keep saying Everbright, Eventbrite, because they are the guys that sold the tokens for the, the upcoming, um, North American Cryptocurrency Conference, which I'm going to be at in New York City. So I hope to see you guys there. But that's why I keep confusing it. But if you come over to Everipedia, which I guess is supposed to be like everyone's, everyone's Pedia, right? It's a very nice website. It looks really good. So obviously, let's, let's search something totally standard here, Bitcoin. Let's see what happens. So I'm searching Bitcoin. Here we go. All right. Nice search results. It was pretty quick. Click on it. And here we go. So to those of you that are familiar with Wikipedia, you could see that this is very similar. They have their citations. They have the information over here. Yeah, so it looks like it's a good website. It looks like they're doing things. And if they actually go through with this, you have a potential to receive some free IQ tokens. So that's more free crypto for you. The last one that I wanted to bring up super quick, not going to spend too much time on it, is Elastos. Now, technically... This isn't really an airdrop or a fork or anything of that nature. That's why I didn't really include it in the list. I just wanted to mention it. So if you come over and look at this Elastos uh, on their medium, they say, I highlighted a few key points here. The Elastos Foundation views community as the most valuable asset of Elastos. Elastos value propositions originate from its utility based solely from its technology, innovation, and ultimately value. So obviously we've seen that these big communities tend to do very well. NEO has a strong community. Ethereum has a strong community. So strong communities can really push a coin to the forefront. And what I wanted to also talk about was they are doing a lock up period. So if you own some ELA or you're looking to get involved in Elastos and you want to lock them up, if you were a participant in the ICO to find your unique lock up ELA wallet ad excuse me ELA wallet address you can log into the token sale page that you use during the sale which you can click at this link tokensale.elastos.org/sale if you don't have login information or if you just bought Elastos on the exchange, you need over 300 ELA. And if you can't find your information, you can send them an imp, uh, uh, email at ir at elastos.org. All right. So they recommend that you lock it up before midnight on February 22nd, or technically midnight would be the 23rd, but you know, who's counting the minutes, right? So the individual minimum amount for lockup is 300 ELA, but they, and then after that, you have to have them in multiples of 100. So 300, 400, 500, et cetera. Elastos tokens, which were awarded at the rate of one Bitcoin to 500 ELA in the angel round and private funding are not eligible. So if you were, if you received them during that time period, those will not be eligible. Contributors who position lock more than 10,000 ELA, which I think that's it's like half a million dollars. So congratulations to you if you have that much. I certainly don't. Um, then you'll be formally invited to join the Elastos Oversight Committee. The annual return rates are 4%, 5%, and 6% based on lock tokens for the first, second, and third year. And I wanted to just discuss in the event that you choose to cancel in the middle of the lockup period, please read this right here. Okay. It says during the position lockup period, any contributor may unlock all, but not less than all of their positions locked during upon the 30. So let me just give this to you in a nutshell. Basically, if you pull your coins out earlier, you may not be eligible for the uh, tokens that are distributed and they are saying that they're going to charge you a 1% uh, management fee. So if you're not serious about this, if you don't want to really lock up your coins for that long, you have a potential to lose all of your dividends. Should you have an early withdrawal? Just keep that in mind. All right. So those are my five coins, guys, obviously just going to be uh, completely transparent. I, I don't hold really any of these coins except for you guys know, I own Neo and I have a very small, small portion of EOS 
Long story short, I was, eh, well, we're not gonna go into that for another video, but yeah, so any of these coins that you guys hold, they hold potentials for forks, for airdrops, and for some nice staking dividends. So that being said, guys, those are five cryptos that could potentially offer you some free crypto coming up in the future. Just wanted to bring it to you. Figure it'd be really good to just bundle it up in a nice video so everyone could just search it. So guys, I wanna say thank you so much to everyone that's been mashing on that like button, leaving me comments, hitting that subscribe button, hitting the bell. You guys are amazing. Join my Telegram group if you haven't yet. Link in the description. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.